And he said, yeah, you can be with me in paradise. Now, how many of y'all know what paradise is? Is it where we are right now? No. What is paradise to you? Ask that question. Well, I just want to say that um, one of the things that we got to remember is that we need to take time after our deaths. Okay? We need to take time after our deaths. And why I'm saying that is because look at it. The thief on the cross didn't take any time with Jesus except to talk to him for a few minutes. A few seconds. We don't know exactly how lengthy this was. But he took the time to be with Jesus in his presence at that moment. And he was what? In the presence of God in the flesh. Now, are we in the presence of God in the flesh? No. We're not. We're in the presence of God through the spirit of Jesus Christ. In the spirit. Okay? So we got to remember that sometimes we got to die. And a lot of times we don't want to do that. All we want to do is live a life in the present moment. Jeez. We're not thinking about going to heaven and being in his presence forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's time that we take the time to what? To be in his presence now. Yeah. The thief didn't get that much time. We have the time, but a lot of us don't even want to mess with it. Amen. A lot of us would rather be playing on Facebook, being on TikTok, playing our video games. Teach, teach. Doing our doing our drugs, doing our alcohol, whatever it takes, being a womanizer, being a manizer. Say it. Because it works both ways. Yeah. They only talk about the men most of the time. Because you know why they only talk about the men? Because they want to bring men down to being nothing. And we can't have that because men gotta stand up and do what God wants them to do with be men. Yes. And it means lead and not sit back and be passive and go, I can't do nothing. No, we got to do it because we got to spend time with Jesus now. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have, we're going to have all the time in that when we get to be in heaven with him. We'll be able to do it in the physical sense. But now is the time we got to do it now. Yeah. So I looked at it. I thought it was interesting because the thief didn't have the time. He really didn't. He only had that brief second in time that God created for him. Yeah. And it's the same thing with us. But like I said, spiritual time is more important for us to get it now. So when we get to heaven, guess what? We've already worked some of them kinks out. Yeah. Yeah. Although I think the kinks will be worked out when we change anyway. But that's not the point. So I just want to remind you guys of some verses real quick. And then I'll be done. All right? We're going to be going to 2 Corinthians. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. And then 2 Corinthians 6, 2. I'm going to read 6, 2 first. For he saith, I heard thee in a time except, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Yeah. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yeah. See, so he wasn't playing when he was telling us, now you got to take the time now. <laughs> so if you go back to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, yeah. he is a new creature. New creature. Old things have passed away. Yeah. And like I said, a lot of people don't want to let the old things pass away. They want to hold on to those old yes. things. Yes. Why do they want to hold on to those old things? Uh -huh. Because they're happy with them. Uh -huh. Now, when you sit in hell, are you going to be happy with that? No. 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 Oh, my. So you got to let go of these things and spend more time with Christ now. So, behold, all things have become new. So if the things are new, then what are we waiting for? Why are we moving on the new stuff that we have? Because you're still holding on to the old stuff. Still holding on. 19 says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. See, that's what he was doing with the thief. He was reconciling himself to the thief. Yeah. Because the thief, what did he do? He accepted that he had not done anything wrong and that he wanted to be with him. Amen. And it was only a split second. We got eternity to do this, but it's better to do it and start with it now. Yeah. So time is very important to God. Yeah. So um, anyway, so the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and half committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Oh, hold up. Now we got to oh. take some time 
to be with some other people, right? Reconciliating <laughs> with some people. We got to bring them into Christ as well. So we need to get to that cross and get that coming together. Amen. Right? And then verse 19 says, oh, wait a minute, I think I did that already. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about in verse 20? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did receive you by us. We pray you in Christ stead be reconciled to God. So see, that's what I'm saying. Time is of the essence. Yeah. Time is something that the, the thief did not get. He didn't get to come down off and get baptized. He didn't get no time to, to come down and tell his family that, look, this is the real the real thing. Yeah. So we've got to take our time Thanks. and get it right. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Bishop and Lex God and say amen, giving us that beautiful word. Amen. 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 He taught that word. Amen. He taught it. Amen. And I caught what he was teaching. Amen. On tonight. Amen. Next we're going to have our prophetess Lucas. He will be giving us our next word. Woman, behold our son. And she'll be coming from John 19. mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Madeline. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took his mother into his own home. So before I get into the word, um, I was reading this in my room. I was studying the scripture over and over again, and I just could not get this message for whatever reason. I couldn't put it together to save my life. And so I talked to my sister and I was telling her, I said, I can't seem to get it together. But as always, she's encouraged me and she always liked to tell me, suck it up, because you got it. So I said, suck it up. And so when I went back to the scripture and I read it again about 50 times trying to get this word together. So the last time I read it and I got down to woman, behold thou son. It just stood out. Just woman, behold thou son. It just stood out like the words just, you know, jumped in my face. It's yeah, just, it yeah. hit me. Yeah, yeah. So it was like I could envision Jesus standing there and he was just looking at his mother. And he was standing with such power, such authority, and such strength. Strength 
You didn't even have at the time. But he said it like, I, the way I heard it was so bold. Yes. It was like, and I don't mean to be on here, but it's like, woman, behold thy son. Yes. So he told his mother, why was going for, behold thy son. Yes. And so at that moment, Jesus gave his mother a command. Yes. Although he was going through this crucifixion of being bruised, he was being beat, he was being whipped, Skin ripped from his body, pins in his side, thorns in his head. He was made fun of. He was made mockery of. He had to carry that huge and heavy cross in the heat. My God, I know it was hot. Sure, he was dehydrated. He was thin on. I mean, I can go on and on and on of what he went through, what he suffered. They put nails through his hands and through his feet, just that alone. So, I'm sorry. So just that alone, I could imagine how he how he felt and what he went, went through. Yes. And he looked over and he saw that his mom was also, she was in pain. Yes. And so he gave her this command. And he gave her this instruction to behold thou son, yes. the disciple in whom he loved and trusted enough to take care of his mother. Yes. That he will take care of her and take her into his own home yes. and take care of her as just as Jesus would have. Yes. So I know that it grieved her. It grieved his mother so. Yes. And I know if it was me, my son, it would have grieved me. Yes. I thank God for the relationship that I have with my son. Yes. It's not a day that goes by I don't talk to him. It's not a day that goes by he doesn't text me. Yes. He doesn't FaceTime me. And I thank God for that relationship. I thank God for the laughter. I thank God for the conversations. You know, we talk about life, the things that's happening in the world, and he tells me a lot of we talk about a real a lot of real life situations and sometimes he'll share some things with me that hurts and it grieves me. Yeah. And when he hurt, I hurt. Yeah. When he's in pain, I'm in pain. Yeah. And I wish I could just take that pain from him and carry it myself. Yeah. But I know he got to go do it. Yeah. He has to endure. He has to get through it. Yeah. And don't help him. Yeah. All I can do is just pray for him. Yeah. All I can do is encourage him. Yeah. All I can do is just put him in the hands of God. Because I know God got him. So, just as Jesus went through it, he had to endure. There was nothing his mother could have done at that time but just watch and be there and be by his side. So he grieved his mother to see his son go through that. And it wasn't easy as a mother to bear witness for such agony or pain. But she had to bear. She had to take it.
miss her so But she still prophesied in her pain.
chapter verse 46 and I'm reading it from the amplified version of the Bible to help expand your understanding it reads this way and about three o'clock Jesus cried with a loud voice Eli Eli Lema Sabachthani that is my God my God why have you abandoned me leaving me helpless Forsaking and failing me in my need. Amen. Father, anoint me for this task. I pray in the name of Jesus. Say amen. 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 This text is also echoed over in Mark, the 15th chapter, the 34th verse, and the wording is slightly different. And contrary to what some may say, particularly those of the atheists and agnostics, Persuasion. This is not a contradiction. This is a matter of a difference in language. Yes. And that Matthew, when we read the oldest surviving text, was written in Hebrew, and Mark, in the oldest surviving text, was written in the Aramaic tongue. Mark is the only gospel written in that tongue. Yes. Here we have Jesus hanging on the cross at 3 p.m. on our current clock. In he makes this cry to the Father, why have you abandoned me in my time of need? Uh, and if I could put a title on this, I would say it would be abandonment issues. Because believe it or not, like it or not, we all have a form of an abandonment yes. issue. Yes. And the abandonment I'm speaking of is not natural. I'm speaking of an abandonment, a separation between us and our Father in heaven. Because you will never convince me that there has not been a time in your life where you have not felt like God left you hanging. I like that. You get a sickness in your body and there seems to be no cure and you feel like God left you hanging. Yeah. Uh, run into debt that you have no control over and you feel like God has left you hanging. Lose your good job. Not, 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 I'm not talking about the little minimum wage job. I'm talking about the good job, the career you got and you will feel like God has left you hanging. Let that one that said that they would love you forever leave you for somebody else up and down that street. Yeah. And you will feel like God has left you hanging. Let your children lose all respect for you for no good reason. And you will feel like God has left you hanging. Let your parents treat you like, like you're not even their child. And you will feel like there are so many things I can talk about where you feel like God left you hanging. And this is the same thing that Jesus felt like his father had left him hanging in his time of need. I said need, not in his time of desire or want, but in his time of need. He was in pain. He was in anguish. He had been disrespected. He had been forsaken even by the people that said they would be by his side. Even the man closest to him, Peter, left him hanging. Everybody had turned their back on him, and now the father turns his back. I can only imagine how that feels because I've had that similar feeling. I've, I've been through multiple surgeries. I've been sick. I've got COVID this year. So teach them. And I felt the times where God just left me hanging. 
But the reason that Jesus had to go through this, here it is in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 15th verse. We had to have a Savior that could identify with everything we might be tempted with in all of our infirmities. That's right. That's right. That's right. So Jesus did not go through this just because he could go through it. God didn't turn his back on Jesus just because he could turn his back. You see, if we did not have a Savior that can identify with how we feel, we would find every excuse not to believe in him. Because all we would have to say is, Lord, you don't understand. Yes. And we would be justified in saying so. This removes that kind of justification because he knows everything we will ever feel. He knows what it feels like when we get sick. He knows what it feels like when we are in pain. He knows what it feels like when we lose that job. He knows what it feels like when that loved one leaves us. He knows what the one that's supposed to love us hates us. He knows how that feels. And because he knows how that feels, he's qualified to be our Lord and Savior. See, I don't know about anybody else, but I couldn't take a God that doesn't understand how I feel. Understood all of that? I'd have no God. Say it again. I like that. If there was no God that could understand how I feel when I'm hurting, when I feel abandoned and lonely, when I feel like the world has turned its back on me. Amen.